Hey guys, welcome back to me. It is me, my face, my channel. It is me, Eamon. Now I'm not gonna bore you with the typical first 30 seconds of self-promotion because I honestly can't be bothered. So let's just get into it. You guys are probably wondering why I have changed my background and that's because I'm with my sister at the moment. I thought I'd keep her some company, but I was like, I can still shoot videos even though I'm not at home. So I just brought my camera and decided to shoot the video. Now the case we're diving into today features not one, but two deaths, which were not ruled correct. Correctly. One was labeled an accident, while the other was labeled a suicide, which would have been fine had the autopsy reports not directly contradicted them. Today's True Crime Thursday is dedicated to the case of Rebecca Zahao the victim. Born in Falaam, Myanmar, Rebecca Sahau was one of six children and was quite the globe trotter. She spoke over three languages and had lived in various countries around the world like Nepal, Germany, and finally the US. Career-wise, Rebecca was an ophthalmic technician, which is basically an eye doctor's technician if you didn't know because I did not, so I had to Google it. Now, her sister Mary described her as a huge health nut. She was very disciplined when it came to eating healthy and she didn't drink either. So I mean, at a glance, Rebecca seems to be doing very well for herself and, you know, seems to have her head on her shoulders. In 2002, she married her first husband, Neil Nelipa, and by 2008, she had started dating the CEO of Medici's Pharmaceutical, Jonah Shatnai, aka the ninth highest paid CEO in Arizona at the time. All the while, she was still married to Neil, but they were sort of separated. Now, Jonah had been married twice before and had three children, two with the first wife and one son named Max with the second. Now, the one and only problematic thing I found out about her was the fact she was caught stealing a thousand dollars worth of jewelry in 2009 and pled guilty to it. Another red flag in the relationship for me was the fact Rebecca was raised in a very Protestant household and was a firm believer in her faith, yet she stopped going to to church just because Jonah didn't go. She moved to Coronado to be with him and life really wasn't just all rainbows and butterflies. Jonah's older two children hated Rebecca so much so that she had contemplated breaking up with him over it. But the one thing everyone did say was that she got along with Max really well. So out of Jonah, Max and Rebecca, how did two of them end up dead? Onto the case. The case. It was July 2011 and Rebecca, her younger sister Zena, and Max were staying at the Spreckles mansion which Jonah used during the summers. Now at some point on the 11th, Zena called the police after finding Max at the bottom of the stairs after having apparently fallen face first over the banister on the second floor. His condition was critical. He had sustained major spinal injuries, injuries to his facial bones and more. Now Max was completely unresponsive when he was rushed to the hospital for intensive care. Now the next day, Rebecca dropped her sister off at the airport and picked up Jonah's brother Adam, who happened to be flying in that same day. Now that night, Adam and Rebecca went back to the mansion while Jonah stayed at the hospital by Max's bedside. And passerbys also reported hearing really loud music coming from the house which doesn't make sense. I mean, Rebecca and Adam partying while Max is in intensive care? Like, how is that appropriate? Regardless, at around 6.45 a.m. on the 13th, Adam woke to find Rebecca's naked body hanging from the balcony. She was gagged with a t-shirt, her ankles, wrists, and hands were bound behind her back, and there looked like there had been some sort of tape on her legs. Within three minutes, Adam had called the police as well as Jonah to tell him what happened to his girlfriend. By the time officers had reached the mansion, Adam had cut down Rebecca's body and despite all efforts to revive her, she was pronounced dead at the scene. Very peculiar that the son goes to the hospital the day before and the day after the girlfriend is found dead. Two weeks after Rebecca's death, Max also passed away from his injuries, so now Jonah had lost both his girlfriend and one of his children. Max's death was ruled an accident while Rebecca's was ruled a suicide. But there are so many questions. Now the autopsy reports show that there were four in instances of head trauma on her body. Now, why would she have head trauma if she committed suicide? If it was a suicide, why did she bind her own hands? Was there anything in her life that could have pushed her to take her own life? It didn't seem like it. Could it have been a homicide? Was Max's accident really an accident? Let's take a look at the theories. The theories. 
Theory number one. Now, the first theory that investigators pushed was that Rebecca had indeed committed suicide. Since she was hanging over the balcony, medical examiners explained away her head trauma by suggesting she most likely hit her head on the balcony on the way down. When she dropped, she could have easily hit the side of wherever she was hanging, but four times? It seemed unlikely. Even her family couldn't stop questioning why her hands and feet were bound, and investigators explained that in some cases when people take their own life, they bind their appendages to stop themselves changing their minds or trying to free themselves. They also supported the suicide theory with the fact that the words, she saved him, can he save her, were painted onto the door going to the balcony. Now, Rebecca was a painter, but did she write that? What does that even mean? Is the he referring to Jonah or Adam or Max? The sheriff said that it isn't a clear enough message to be labeled a suicide note, and her family upheld the fact it wasn't written in Rebecca's handwriting. The police had also gone through her phone records and found that that night she had gotten a text from Jonah's ex-wife's sister asking to come over to talk about what happened to Max, to which Rebecca didn't reply. She then received a voicemail at around 1am, which investigators were never able to retrieve and they also have no idea who sent it. Apparently, it was from Jonah telling her about how Max was getting worse, but was it? Did she get some awful news she didn't want to hear so much so that she decided to off herself? Was Jonah blaming her for what happened to Max because she was the one babysitting him? I don't know. Her sister Mary also shared that suicide makes no sense. She was texting Mary about how she had to go to the hospital the next day to take some of Max's clothes and to get him some food. So why would she be making all these plans if she planned to kill herself? Her ex-husband Neil also agreed with that sentiment saying taking her own life was extremely extremely out of character and he doesn't believe she did it. Theory number two. The second theory is that what happened to Rebecca Zahal was a homicide, not a suicide. Her family also thought the circumstances surrounding her death were suspicious, so they got a second autopsy done on her body. The doctor told them that her throat had been fractured in various places and that he believed it was due to manual strangulation. The fractures just weren't consistent with the type of fractures one gets after hanging. Now, despite that finding, investigators claimed that there was absolutely no one else's DNA found at the scene other than Rebecca's. Now the family again were outraged at that, like how could investigators not find even a sliver of someone else's DNA? Fingerprints on her body, a hair somewhere, something. Her family also claimed the sheriff's department didn't do a good job with her investigation since they had found evidence that Rebecca had been sexually assaulted but they failed to publish that. I mean, the only other person in the house that night was Adam. But what motive would he have had to kill his brother's girlfriend unless maybe he thought she was to blame for Max as well? Was he the one that killed and assaulted her? Jonah claimed the two barely knew each other but were obviously civil and pleasant. Neighbors around the mansion also reported hearing a girl screaming for help on the night in question. The family is also extremely rich so it's not like they couldn't have bribed some investors investigators to claim they hadn't found any DNA when perhaps they had. They could have bribed the sheriff even, we have no idea. Mary even said the investigating team did a horrible job, there were clues and evidence left around that pointed to Rebecca fighting the night she died, but it was all ignored. Theory number three. This theory is a bit of a long shot, I admit, but it's not entirely implausible. Now, the day of Max's accident, Rebecca was visibly upset, but she kept telling Mary how Jonah's ex-wife was going to kill her because of it. She already didn't like the fact Rebecca had gotten close to her son, but she also never forbade it. So obviously some people point to the ex-wife as killing Rebecca, but this theory also proved false since Max's mom was at his bedside on the fateful night and there were many witnesses to prove it. Now you guys, I've given you the case, the victim, all three theories. What do you think happened? To be honest, I cannot believe they ruled it a suicide because I just feel like nothing really points to that. I feel like something definitely happened. If they were playing loud music the night of her death, neighbors heard screaming from the house like something definitely happened. Maybe it wasn't Adam. People target rich people in their houses all the time. Maybe it was a robbery gone wrong. Maybe it was a gang robbery that turned into, you know, her getting rich then killed because she was a witness now. Like, I have no idea. I just find it so strange how there was also no DNA found at the crime scene. Like, you're telling me no one else was there. 
Like someone strangled her, but you can't find a sliver of DNA. Like I fail to believe that. Honestly, I really do believe it was a homicide, not a suicide. I mean, obviously I didn't know her. I don't know what she was going through. I don't know what she was thinking of. She could have very well been in a dark place and about to take her own life, but nothing really pointed to that. But at the same time, as you know, people present their mental health in different ways. The most depressed people, you know, are like the ones who you think are the happiest and smiling the most. So honestly, we don't know. Let me know which theory tickles your fancy the most in the comments below. As always, it was me, Eamon, your favorite true crime investigator back with another episode. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Bye.